Hey, what's up? Easy Overdose here. So, what's Tell Me When, and why do you need it? It's an add-on that will track anything and everything, basically. The buffs, debuffs, spell cooldowns, items, resources. So, whatever you can think of, it can probably track it. So, a good example is, like, if I'm missing Flame Tongue Weapon and my Lightning Shield on my Shaman, I get two icons that pop up over my character telling me that I'm missing important buffs. And I also have it set up to track my simple rotation. So it's telling me, like, no flame shock is on the target. Put flame shock on there. It's telling me lava burst is off cooldown. Use it. It's telling me searing totem is uh, not dropped. Use it. And then I have it set to track uh, shield charges as well. And then since I need to use earth shock to dump the shield charges, if I've just used, like, flame shock, for example, I have a earth shock transparent icon over the lightning shield to basically hide it to say you know I can't use it so that's like the basics of what it can do and it can do a lot more as well uh, for example I have it set to sh tracking the shield on stone bulwark which you could use for like death strike or warlock absorb anything that's got an absorb basically set it up for anything and I have this set up to where once I reach a certain health percentage, that uh, another icon will pop up and tell me to use Stone Bulwark. So let's jump in and let's make some icons. When you get it, you're going to have just a blank uh, bar like this and this little red hand. The little red hand is, you can anchor any of these icons on this, on your cursor. So like you drag it to this thing, and you'll have it anchored. I don't know why you'd need that, I haven't really found it useful or anything, but if, uh, if you happen to do that on accident, I'm going to show you how to disable that first off. You right click on one of these icons, you type slash TMW to get in the options, and then right click on the icon and then go to main options, and then check full options in the top left corner, and then go to the position tab, and where it says relative to, it'll say cursor anchor, just delete that and hit OK. That'll put you back to normal mode. So we're going to start off with uh, the flame shock on target. So this is going to be relative to like um, immolate for your warlock, uh, your dots, agony, corruption, shadow priest dots, you know, anything that's uh, class relative. So we're going to track buff debuff and you just type in whatever the name of the debuff is. For me it's going to be flame shock. It's going to give you suggestions. Usually, it's the top suggestion, and it's probably got like a little bar on it, like a colored bar. So then right underneath that, units to watch, it comes default player, we need to change it to target. Underneath that, it comes default set to buff, we need to change that to debuff. And then we need to check only cast by me, in this case. And this bar is uh, like the transparency of it whenever it's present. And this one is the transparency of it whenever it's absent. So I'm going to basically set this up the same way that I already have my stuff set up. And just so you can like reference to it like that. So I want the show timer on. And that's going to make like the sweeping animation. And you can, uh, depending on what you're tracking for like a debuff you're probably going to want to have invert shading on so like the sweeping animation is like uh, it's like you know fully opaque and then swoops back around to be in you know transparent like the debuff fell off just like the default UI and then I want the text on if you don't have LVI you have this but it says you need Omni CC or similar so you might have to grab one of those if you want to see the, see the text and then for duration requirements, we're going to put this at uh, like 7. 
And that gives me enough time to use a, a shock spell, dump my shield charges, and then have a global cooldown left to get flame shock back on there. So then we hit OK on that one. And because I didn't set it to uh, only show in combat, it's showing right there, and that's how you want to have it when you're configuring these and setting them up. So we'll just test this and put flame shock on the target. We can kind of verify it going back and forth to a target that doesn't have flame shock on it. And then just kind of hang out a minute for whatever you set it to. If you're setting it for something that's like a really long cooldown, a really long debuff or something, set it for like way higher than it uh than it is. That way like you don't have to wait an extremely long time just to test it. And then if it works, just go in there and tweak the, the timer. So, now we have uh, Lava Burst. And for this one, this is like a really simple one. Anything that's just like a spell. You just do Spell Cooldown, Lava Burst. And we're going to do basically the same thing. We're going to do Unusable at 50%. going to show all this stuff. I'm going to allow global cooldown, and then for uh, duration requirements, I'm going to put that one at like 2, and you can verify that one's working. And that's what it'll look like. So then for... Um, tracking stacks like a stack of a of a buff and you could track it as a stack for uh, a debuff or a track for a buff as well so we're gonna track uh, a buff for lightning shield so we're gonna type lightning shield buff and then we need to I'm actually just not mess with any of this I think it's already good but we're gonna come down here to the bottom right and change this to stacks then hit OK and verify it's working so it says I have one stack alright so that's working and now we need to tweak it oh yeah you probably want to do this since you're going to be in and out of combat a lot, go to main options, and then go to main options again, and then check this box that says allow config in combat. And it's going to tell you to reload the UI, I guess. But we're going to go back here and change uh, the stack requirements minimum to 5, so it only shows at 5 stacks. Now let's build some charges. Try to build them slow instead of just one chain lightning towards like instantly seven. All right, so there's five. And I'm gonna show you how to put the little glowy thing around it too here in a second. So then for the earth shock overlay, uh, since you can't dump the shield charges of earth shocks on cooldown, and if you use Flame Shock, it puts Earth Shock on cooldown. We just do a simple spell cooldown for that with a little bit of a twist. Basically, kind of do it reverse of Lava Burst to where when it's usable, we don't need to see it. And when it's unusable, I think I have it around like 70 or 80% transparency. So, timer. And hit OK. I think that's good. So that's what you're looking for on that one. And then if you're a shaman and you're wanting to track your uh, your totems, I'm going to come down here to main options and if you click a group, whatever group you click, it'll kind of jump to it on the uh, the groups profile thing. So we're at group 10. 
doing this video and I'm going to change these columns here to 10 or something just enough to play around with so for the totem it actually has a special thing for totem tilt totem we're just going to do the fire totem for the searing totem so searing totem and then we're going to kind of do the reverse thing again to where it shows it if we don't have it 50 percent transparent if we do have it and for the duration requirements we're going to put it at like three well for testing we're going to put it at like 55 because the thing's a, a minute long so we're going to put, test it at 55 first so there it's showing that we have it and then when it's uh, 55 seconds it should pop up and say it's about ready to run off so that one works so you would set that to like two or three something like that for, okay for this there's uh we're going to jump right into conditions from this one so we don't need to see uh searing totem if we have fire elemental totem down right so like the start of a pull and you're bursting and you get your fire elemental totem down you don't need to see the searing totem because the fire elemental totem is down so what you can do with this is you go to conditions you add a condition and we're going to tell it to track a spell cooldown and the spell cooldown is the fire elemental totem and uh, basically the totem's a five minute cooldown so when the thing has like four minutes and like three seconds left on the cooldown that means that the uh, totem has three seconds left and then that would be a good time to show like a notification for the icon to pop up so uh, six times four we're looking at like 243 seconds and just to test this we'll put it at like uh, 2 280 and we need to tell it to be uh, less than or equal to so that one that one still works so basically if you have your fire elemental totem down it's not going to show it and then when this uh totem uh ticks for about 20 seconds i guess i could have put it at a little higher so five four it should pop the icon up and there it is so realistically you would set that one to like 242 so when the totem uh, the fire elemental totem has two seconds left it would show it all right for uh, ascendance ascendance is like specific to uh, a shaman since it's kind of like a weird spell so one of these is the cooldown of the spell, which I've already showed you how to do. Just simple track a spell cooldown. But then the other one's a buff. And I basically have it set up the same way as I just showed you. So whenever you whenever you hit the spell, I have it next to Lava Burst. So it's basically telling me, like, you know, I can cast lava burst cast lava burst and just keep casting lava burst and I can see you know when it gets down to like right here one second left I know boom go to the next spell continue my rotation all right so you got all that set up and that's like the basics of it so now that you've uh, got that set up what you would do is you'd go to main options and then you would check this only show in combat and you would uncheck for restoration that way if you're switching talents uh, to your dual spec it doesn't show up in your healer spec and we'll uh we'll jump to frame strata from here okay so you got this stuff set up and if you want it set up like mine you like hold right click and just drag these out of the group 
and say you want like your icon over your flame shock or your lava burst like that, what you need to do is you need to go in and change the frame strata. So we're going to pick the flame shock and then we're going to go to position and put frame strata high. So that's going to tell the flame shock to be on top of the lava burst. So for uh, the earth shock, we're going to have the earth shock on top of the uh, shield charges. So then pick the earth shock one and then tell it high. And then this one's going to be under all those three. So then tell that one low. Go melee the target dummy just to check. I have that set up a little bit different than uh, my original one, it looks like. Looks like I didn't get the frame strata of the Searing Totem. Which is alright. So pick Searing Totem. This one needs to be low, that means I accidentally put something else low. So we'll just check all these. That one can be medium, and then this one needs to be high. And then for the flame shock, all absent. Have that full, and then presence 50% transparent. So that looks good. It looks like the uh, Earth Shock. On mine, I have the Earth Shock slightly smaller uh, than the other ones. So I can kind of see around them. So you take the Earth Shock and just size that down a little bit. I also think I have it a little bit more transparent. Maybe like 50. Just check that real quick. Yeah, I have it at 50. So for the glow, if you want to put a glow around it, like a glow notification, you just go to notifications, just click the one you want, notifications, and the glow is the animation, and I have it on show, and it can do a bunch of stuff. You got your shake, screen flash, the icon shake, you can make the color of the icon flash, make it kind of like black out, make it fade in and out. But it's activation border is the one with the glow, and then you check play indefinitely. And you get that cool little glow. Alright, a couple more things is I'm gonna come out here and lose some health. Basically, I have some uh, icons set up, so when I get under a certain health threshold, when I get under 50%, I get the, the beep sound, and then I get the uh, stone bulwark activation. So that's telling me, use stone bulwark. And then I have a setup to track the absorb. So if Stone Bulwark is on cooldown, and I dip below 40% health, oh, crap. then Call of Elements pops up, and it's telling me, use Call of Elements. And then Call of Elements makes Stone Bulwark come back off cooldown. And then if all those are on cooldown, it's telling me use... Ancestral Guidance. And then if I use Ancestral Guidance, get over here and get in combat again. If I use Ancestral Guidance, I have it tracking right next to the Stone Bulwark.
So I'll show you how to set up the uh, the notifications for that. All right. So basically, I have Stone Bulwark. And I'm just tracking uh, spell cooldown for it. It's basic stuff. Show uh, a timer and a global cooldown. And then for conditions, you pick uh, resources, percent health, player, and then less than or equal to. And then I have a notification for a sound. And I also have the activation border to glow. So then when that's on cooldown, I track the same deal. Spell cooldown for the Call of Elements, and then two conditions for this one. This one's checking for a spell cooldown of Stone Bulwark Totem. So if the Stone Bulwark Totem is greater than zero seconds on cooldown, and I have less than 40% health, or less than equal to 40% health, then it will show that icon. And then of course I have a, a sound for it. Aw, oh, crap. Oh, crap. Homer Simpson, I think. And then it glows as well. And same deal with the uh, Ancestral Guidance. Just tracking a normal spell cooldown. But I have three conditions on it. My health needs to be uh, less than or equal to 40%. And Call of Elements has to be on cooldown. And sto stone, work, stone Bulwark Totem has to be on cooldown. So all three of those things have to happen for it to show that one. And for this instance, I have, pretty sure I have this one set to high for the frame strata. So that's set to high for frame strata. And then for the other two, it doesn't matter because the other two won't be up at the same time. Even though I, I think I have them, yeah, I have them all set to high, medium, and low. But they all three can't be up at the same time anyway. So then to track the actual shield on your character... It shows the shield. Um, basically, I'm tracking a buff, and this would be for like blood shield for DKs. You would just track blood shield, and uh, you insta watch player buff, and then you check show variable text. That's what shows the text for the uh, absorb amount. And you can do this with uh, debuffs as well. Like if you want to know like how much your flame shock's ticking for. Or how much like a dot's ticking for or something, or how much your rip's ticking for, you know, based on trinket procs and stuff. You can do it like that as well. It has a bunch of different uses. So with this, this is going to get like a little bit uh, trickier and in depth because depending on the size of your icons and the size of like the font that you're using, this might not fit. The, the text of the absorb might not fit in the icon, especially like if you're a, a Death Knight and the next expansion's coming up, so everybody's going to have over like a million health. And once you break that seventh digit, you know, it starts exceeding out the edges of the icon. So I'm going to show you how to tweak that so you can fit it into the icon. So you go down here to where it says text displays, and it's going to say default icon layout 1. You click this little gear to go into the settings, and then you're going to see this. Make sure it's uh, highlighted default icon layout 1. Tell it clone layout, because you can't edit the default settings. Though. Everything's going to be grayed out. And in here you go to stacks, and for the stacks, I've changed this. Default, it comes like thick outline. I changed it to a thin outline. And I'm using the Arial Narrow font, because it's a small font. And I changed the font size way down to 7. And down here at the bottom, where it says point, this is like the anchor point of the text. I changed both these to bottom, because they weren't on bottom. I'm not sure exactly what they were default, but they're not on bottom. And I left uh, where it says relative to the icon alone. And then the X and the Y offset. I changed that. I think this one was like negative two, and I don't know what that one was, but I changed that to where it's basically like centered at the bottom, you know, and it was underneath the actual uh, 
timer text because I was having an issue where like I wanted to keep the timer like the 9876 but the text was just a little bit too big and they were kind of like overlapping each other and looking ugly so that's how I did all that so I'm going to switch to uh, my death knight real quick and I'll show you how to set something up for like um, soul reaper I guess you could is what it's for, Soul Reaper, and I'll show you how to set up like kill shots and stuff, like if you're a hunter or a priest for Shadow Word Death. So actually I came in here, and if you are a Death Knight, and you're wanting to set this up, um, I came into Ice Crown Citadel because it's got the buff to give you 30% more health, that way I have over a million health to, to set up my blood shield properly on the icon. And I'm going to show you how to set up something else that I kind of touched on a minute ago. If you're missing something important, like this is, you know, comparable to the self-buff of the shamans, there's a way to do this with um, buffs that, like, multiple classes bring. For example, like, if you're going to track a buff and a debuff, uh, and you're tracking, you know, the Horn of Winter buff, you type in Horn of Winter, and it's going to have increased attack power. And that's what you want to pick. So let's check into, like, if you have Battle Shout, or Horn of Winter, or True Shout Aura, it's not going to show you the icon. And you can do the same thing with, like, Curse of Elements, or Master Poisoner, and whatever else there is for the debuff. So it's checking, like, as long as it's got the uh, 5 or 8% magical damage debuff on the target, it won't show the icon. So, and it's going to show you tell you the same thing uh, for that. Let's see if I can bring that up real quick. A curse, if you just type like Curse of Elements, spell damage taken is what it shows, so that's for that one. So for this one, like, um, kind of go over this real quick. I'm tracking like Empowered Rune Weapon, Dancing Rune Weapon, Blood Shield, Soul Reaper is what I'm going to show you, and then I'm tracking for uh, if my target has Frost Fever or Blood Plague on it, and I use the custom texture to show Outbreak, and then I have it set to the frame strata to where the uh, Soul Reaper is overlapping it. On these, these are like my cooldowns. I have it basically set up the same way Stone Bulwark is. I have Bone Shield uh, showing at like 70%, and then Vampiric Blood at 50%, and then Icebound Fortitude at 30% as well as uh, Death Pact at 30%. And then these are just icons that show me the stacks of Bone Shield, and that uh, the Vampiric Blood buff is up, and the Icebound Fortitude buff is up, like active, and then tracking the uh, Magic Shell, Anti-Magic Shell. So if my Anti-Magic Shell is uh, on cooldown, it will show it. If it's not on cooldown, it won't show it. So basically, like if I don't see the icon for it, I know it's off cooldown. Uh, but if I do see the icon for it, like that, then I know it's on cooldown. So the uh, there's the Soul Reaper. It's basically telling me, like, you know, use Soul Reaper. Your target's under 35% or whatever. And then we'll uh, get me up to a million health here. Show you that the icon fits in the thing, right? So there's a million, you can see the, the icon fits in there, or the text fits inside the icon just fine. And that's so, like, you can use that uh, profile for, you know, multiple characters. But if you can't make that work, you can obviously just make a second profile and adjust it for each one. So for the Soul Reaper, it's basically a uh, condition same way you'd set up like the health thing. You're just going to tell it track a soul reaper and you can tell it ignore runes or not not ignore runes and that's going to uh, just make like the sweeping animation like go back on cooldown. And for the condition percent health target uh, less than or equal to 40%. I have it set to 40% because you use it at 35% depending on the health of the mob. Sometimes you put it on a mob that's like full health. If you think it's going to take you, you know, five seconds or however long it ticks for to get him down to 35%. So 
So I have it set to 40%. It's like an early reminder. So let's do a kill shot and then I'll wrap the video up. Alright, for um, kill shots and shadow word death and like executes, you're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to do reactive ability. So reactive ability, shadow word death, check the activation border. And that's telling the add-on to check for the glowy border of the default UI. And I'm going to do the timer text and the global cooldown. And I think that's it. So if I target this one, nothing. Target that one, it pops up. And if I use it, it's it on cooldown. And that's all there is to the uh, kill shot ones. Alright, I'm going to cover like one or two more things real quick, uh, just so I feel as though it's like a complete guide. We're going to do some stuff with the uh, runic power. So this can be for like rage or uh, energy or runic power. So like your uh, frost DK and like your basic rotation is like frost strike obliterate, frost strike obliterate, frost strike obliterate, back and forth. So we're going to do like a uh, spell cooldown of Frost Strike. Need to check a uh, power check. And we're going to tell this to check. Uh, we'll do like a two second on that. Show the timer. Allow the global cooldown. And we're going to do one for Obliterate. And do like a one second on that. And we're going to do another one for uh, <coughs> Frost Strike. <coughs> We're not going to check that one. Probably uncheck that one as well. So here's the purpose of this. This one is going to be a condition for if I have less than Greater than or equal to 25%. How much runic power does Frost Strike cost? It costs 35. Oh, wait, I'm not in. Alright, it costs 20. So, yeah, if we have 25 or more uh, runic power, We'll do 20 or more. We'll put it right on the dot. But 20 more runic power, that icon's going to show. And if we have... Do like 65 or more, then that icon's going to show. So for this icon, I'm going to put that one as a high frame strata. This one's going to be a low frame strata. And you basically stack them like that to where once I get past uh, 65 runic power, there's my frost strike. Then I go under that, and there's obliterate because obliterates off cooldown. So as soon as I exhaust my runes, it's just going to show frost strike. See if I can hit this long enough to make it exhaustive. So there's obliterate. Uh, there's the runes exhausted with obliterate on cooldown. So that would be your basic rotation. I guess you'd probably set that to where the uh, obliterate timer is a little bit longer, to where you can actually see it, to where it just doesn't disappear. So let's set that to like. Or just uncheck it. 
no timer at all. Or if you can't use it, you'll know why you can't use it. So it looks something like that. But that gives you an idea of how you can uh, set it up for like runic power or rage or something. Well, that right there is uh, all the basics that you need to know to really uh, make this thing work. The only thing I didn't really talk about, I mean, I didn't talk about a lot of stuff. If you go through the options and the conditions and stuff, you can see that it's just like miles long of stuff, but that's all the basics. But the thing I didn't uh, talk about were uh, groups. Like when you when you add a new group, you can make it a bar or you can make it an icon. So the bars look something like that. Alright, well it doesn't want to... Derp, that's why I'm dragging empty icon to it. You didn't see that. So that's uh, what the bars look like. And it doesn't work as good for like uh, runic power, obviously. But you can see when I get obliterated on cooldown, how it kind of has a bar. So if you're into that and you want that, that's what the bars are about. So when you're making this stuff, instead of uh, setting the setting it up as an icon, just go over here to the main options, add another group, and add it as a bar group. You can probably change these to a bar in the thing, like this. If you, if you want to. But I prefer the icons, so that gives you options. Alright, well, that's gonna wrap up the video. That's about all I have to offer for uh, Tell Me When. Hope you found it useful. Hit the like button, leave a comment, subscribe. Peace.